Hey out there, this is Thursday, August 15th, 2019. And it is just about uh, almost 10 minutes past 9 in the morning here in Northern California. As usual, I'll get into a lot of different stuff today. You know, every week I tell myself um, that I'm going to try to keep it to two tapes. Uh, these are 41-minute uh, mini DV tapes I'm talking about. When the uh, mode is set on DV cam, the highest quality shoot and uh, you know it seems like almost every week without fail I end up uh, running three tapes but I'm gonna try one more time to keep it short today but um, listen I love everybody and I wish everybody the best and I hope everybody's doing great out there and you know one of the things that's been on my mind is just um, being grateful you know this attitude of gratitude and um, you know, we all ought to seize the opportunity to be grateful. It's uh, one of the most satisfying attitudes you can ever have, is just to be glad. You know, I wonder how many times throughout the day most people just thank God to exist for their very life. And, um, you know, I'm one of those that tries to remember that and just uh, understand my neediness and that that's okay and that God understands and even if nobody else understands there is one that does and um, and that's good we need that we really do we cannot depend on human beings alone okay it's great to have friends family I mean I make friends with strangers all the time just the other day I was going into the supermarket and I saw this disheveled man walking past me and uh, he looked like he was likely homeless. A lot of that around this area in Butte County and Chico here. And it was especially, uh, it's been exacerbated intensely by this, uh, what happened in Paradise. And, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, twelve to 13,000 homes displaced, uh, destroyed. And so we're talking about multiple people on average per home. Uh, that's a lot of, a lot of homelessness that was created overnight here but um, the guy was walking briskly and I called him back to me and he came over and and I asked him if he could use a few bucks you know and um, and he uh, he said no at first and I was taken aback but this isn't the first time it's happened but um, you know I said oh great well you've got some income I'm glad and, um, you know, I said that if it was me, I, it's unlikely I would have turned down the offer um, if somebody offered me a few bucks. But uh, in retrospect, um, I, uh, I might turn it down. Um, I, I, um, I, can, uh, I can imagine that. In fact, I had a homeless guy offer me, uh, you know, I'm guessing, I am, I am supposing, I'm projecting that when I, I think somebody's homeless, I admit that I, it's just sometimes you get a sense, you get a feel of somebody that's kind of living on the street and desperate, if you know what I mean. But, uh, you know, he was, I was paying for gas and I was buying $34 worth and this guy said, here, give him this, make it an even 35, I mean, whatever that means. But uh, in his mind, I guess he's rounding it off to five. So, um, and I said, no, you know what? I said, thank you very much, but uh, I'm good. So I, I actually do remember turning it down. But anyhow, he did eventually accept it, and um, I handed him a few bucks. And um, But we ended up talking for, I think, over an hour. And, um, you know, it's always interesting to get to meet people. And uh, this guy had some issues. He... Uh, he was in uh, incarcerated, and uh, I never got into the specifics. You know, a lot of these guys, ex-cons, they don't like to be quizzed too much. But um, I did ask him point blank if it had anything to do with financial desperation, and he was very quick to to tell me that yes, indeed, it was. So, you know, which doesn't surprise me in the least because the vast majority of crimes out there are motivated by destitution, by financial desperation. And um, and this is a big beef for me because 
Financial desperation is not organic, not in the 21st century. Austerity, poverty is invented now. It's, it's neo-feudalism. It's, it's the same thing as old feudalism, op ancient oppression, enslavement of the masses, uh, with a twist, and that is this, they've got it down to a science now, that the evil men that are running the show, they've got oppression down to a science. So anyhow, it was it was enjoyable to talk to him, and I think I kind of blew his mind with all the information I was giving him, trying to empower him. And it, it, there seemed to be a disconnect. There was something wrong, and uh, I know he had offered me a beer that was in his backpack, so evidently he was in the grocery store buying beer. I don't know what else, but he did offer me a beer, which I declined. But, um, you know, so he does have um, issues, probably uh, drinking and and uh, we were talking about uh, you know, creature comforts, and um, and he he was he was arg he was almost combative with me about this issue because he 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 just couldn't admit that he would enjoy basic creature comforts. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine not wanting a place to at the end of your day to lay your stuff down and relax. I mean, the stuff that we all take for granted these days, right? Like a refrigerator and a freezer and a stove and a toilet and a shower, right? Stuff that base, basic creature comforts in the 21st century, right? A warm, dry bed to sleep in, a few electronics like a television, maybe a computer, just basic stuff. I mean, some place to store your clean clothing, your toiletries, your food, to be able to prepare a meal anytime you feel like it. I mean, just basic stuff. And, you know, I almost had to persuade this guy that, you know, he, he, he if he doesn't, there's something wrong. And, he, you know, it's only normal to care about these things. But that's, that's a state of mind. I've met more of these homeless people that get into this prideful state of mind and they almost become animalistic and they almost forget their godly nature. And And this is why I said over and over again that if I spent my life or any one of us spent our lives traveling this planet and just letting people know what they mean to their owner. Yeah, I'm talking about God Almighty. I'm talking about our divine parents as described in the first chapter of the Bible in the first book of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, where God talks about what we, what we mean to him, what we are. We are, and what God is, the nature of God, being male and female, and we being male and female, and being his children. Understand this, we're children of the Most High, Almighty Creator God, and that we are loved beyond anything else in this world. Okay, God doesn't give a crap about the things that are highly valued among men, as explained very explicitly in Scripture, right? Those things that are highly valued among men are often very detestable in the sight of God. It doesn't say often. I added that. Like I, I ad lib um, and editorialize practically every quote I've ever heard. But... Um, right or wrong I mean it just to me you could say that um, some of those are similar like I've explained that there's two types of human nature we have a good human nature that's the godly human nature that God gave us the one where we value we have the right values where we value things like like reputation we value conscience con our conscience we value integrity we value honor. We value our soul. We value our friends. We value even our relationship with creatures, typically. I mean, it's just like there, there's a cat here at the property I'm at, and Frankie, and he's a tabby, and, and we have a great relationship. I mean, I communicate with the cat. He communicates with me. He has no problem letting me know, and if he's hungry, and it's my job to feed him. Um, he'll make it very clear. And he's a typical cat. 
that he's aloof and a little untrustworthy of even creatures like myself that he's known for a number of years. And I admire that. I respect that in him. And I understand that. And I just try to reassure him and I tell him that his trust is very valuable to me. And I feel like he understands me, not that he understands English or human words at all, any language, any human language, but that he understands the vibration, the way I say it to him. And it's a beautiful thing, and I value that. And these are just a few of the values that are very common. These are, this is our godly nature. Just like you like, you know, stop and smell the roses. Is, it sounds so cliche, but it's really true to stop and just be grateful for those little things in our lives. I mean, you know, what does it all come down to if we don't just take time for ourselves and just thank God that we exist and we have our five senses, we have life, and we can give love, and there's an opportunity to receive love and and uh, if we offend anybody, whether it's it's uh, inadvertently or it's on purpose, um, and then we realize it, and then we f see the need to ask forgiveness, that's that's good. We should do that. King Solomon alludes to this in some of his writing, and he talks about freeing yourself from the hand of the fowler. You see, when we don't apologize, when we know in our heart we're wrong, that we fell short of being the person we really want to be, to being truly true to ourselves, to being the ideal person that we really want to be, not on a superficial level, but deep down in the marrow of our being, in the marrow of our essence, of who we really are, who we really decide we must be, then we are lying to ourselves. And then who are we? Our substance goes out the window and our lives are in disarray. So this is a way to free yourself from the hand of the fowler. You can't give someone free rent in your head. You've got to apologize. You've got to be able to say you're sorry. And that's the first step because whoever you may have offended, again, inadvertently or advertently, deliberately, intentionally, um, is under no, has no obligation to forgive you. It's their prerogative to hold a grudge, to resent you and and just curse you, if they, you know, whatever they, they want. It's their heart, their mind, their spirit, their soul. And they've got to make their own decisions for their own selves. And this all comes down to free will choice. This is something that we all have. Okay, this, is, this explains all the organic suffering in the whole world. The great amount of duress we're all under organically. But I don't complain about those things. Yet I do feel compelled to explain them to people.